it's my cap for Richard the Third. Um, I chose Prezi to do this on instead of PowerPoint because if I live my entire life and never see another PowerPoint, it'll be too soon. Um, also, I chose a tree because it's kind of like a family tree thing, and they're winter trees, winter of discontent. Yeah. Okay. So, the characters that I'm covering in my map are. Ooh, my computer is very angry. There we go. Queen Elizabeth, who is King Edward the Fourth's wife. Queen Margaret, uh, the widow of Henry the Sixth, mother of Edward, Prince of Wales, and I read that she appears in all four of the plays, so Henry and all its three parts, as well as Richard the Third, and then Lady Anne, who is Prince Edward's widow and Richard the Third's wife. All right, so we will start with Queen Elizabeth. Once my computer catches up. All right, here we go. So, in real life, in real history, she was born in 1437. They don't have an exact date. Her parents were Sir Richard Woodville and Jaquetta of Luxembourg. And this was a scandal because um, her mother was of a higher station and her father. Uh, when she married Edward the Fourth, she was already a widow with two sons. They had to have special permission to get married. Um, and they got married in May of 1464. Uh, she was a Lancaster and not a royal rank, so her marriage to Edward the Fourth was doubly scandalous. In history, she was unpopular because she frequently moved friends and family up in social class through different positions that she appointed through her power as queen. Uh, she gave birth to two sons and five daughters with um, Edward the Fourth. Edward the Fourth died April 9th, 1483, and Richard III usurps the throne from Edward the Fifth, who was 12 at the time. And Elizabeth goes into uh, Elizabeth's two sons, Edward the fifth and his younger brother, they disappear from the Talented in 1483. Uh, according to the sources I read, they don't know why they disappeared and they were never found. Uh, later, Henry the seventh marries her eldest daughter, but Elizabeth is disgraced for treason, possibly. So she dies in June 7th or 8th, of 1487. Now, in the play, one of the major plot points is that Richard murders Lady Anne so he can wed Queen Elizabeth's older daughter, who is also named Elizabeth. Uh, but there is no evidence of this plot in actual history. Um, in the notes on Richard III, in the footnotes of the Norton Anthology, it says that there was no evidence of him wanting to marry her or killing Anne as a result. Uh, but the play explicitly explains that another difference is that Queen Elizabeth's sons were murdered in the Tower of London. They didn't just disappear, uh, but in the play they are murdered by Tyrell. And we pretty much are clear that Richard had ordered this. And, but in real history, no one knows what happens to the two princes. So those are the differences in between Queen Elizabeth's life in real history and Richard's, uh, Richard III's version, William Shakespeare, Richard III's version of Queen Elizabeth. Next we have Queen Margaret, or as I like to call her, the HBIC, uh, which is head bitch in charge. Um, so her early life, she was March 23rd, 1430. Her parents were 
Renee of I hope I'm saying that right, and Duchess of Lorraine. Uh, she married Henry the in April twenty third, fourteen forty five. She became the queen in May thirtieth of fourteen forty five at the age of fifteen. Uh, she gave birth to Edward the Prince of Wales on October thirteenth, fourteen fifty three. And another tidbit that I found interesting about her, she founded the Queen's College in Cambridge in 1448. Uh, she was a pivotal figure of the Roses on the Lancaster side. First battle, uh, they lose to the Yorks, and she's there for the battle. Um, and then she outs Richard, the Duke of York, who starts the whole York um, crown. She outs him from power in 1456. And then in 1460, Henry VI is captured, and she refuses to compromise, insists that her son, Edward, is the rightful successor. Her loyalists kill Richard, Duke of York, in December of that same year. So in February of 1461, Henry VI is freed, and this is all like her planning this out, and she has these people that do this for her, the other Lancaster family members. Um, in 1470, she teams up with Warwick, the um, Earl of Warwick, to restore Henry VI to the throne, and he died old. So then... On May 4th, 1471, she's they are defeated, and she, again, was there, and her son is killed in this battle. Soon after, her husband is murdered in the Tower of London. So she, after the death of her husband, she remains in custody in England until 1475, when she is ransomed Louis of France, King Lance. And she lives and dies in France, penniless, on August 24th, 1482. In Richard III, Queen Margaret serves as Greenblatt says, or no, oh, who is it? It's, uh, da, 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 da. sorry. No. It is uh, great. Howard, Jean Howard. She says she serves as a half crazed chorus where she spits out prophecies and curses and she warns everyone of the events that are going to happen in the play. Her thing is curses. Uh, she, her and Queen Elizabeth come up with this curse against Richard III, which is uh, pivotal near the end of the play. Uh, but what's funny about this is that historically, Margaret was not even in England during the time of events of the play. She was banished and not allowed. Or uh, she was in custody, I mean. And uh, she was so well liked as a character of the time in the other plays in Henry Part 1 through 3 that Shakespeare basically brought her back for this play, even though she was not uh, involved in any of these events, which I thought was funny. All right, and last but not least, we have Lady Anne. All right, so Lady Anne was born June 11th, 1450. Her parents were Richard Neville, Earl of World in the earlier um, when I was talking about Queen Margaret. And she is also the great niece of Cicely Neville, who first, the, um, who Margaret's followers murdered. So in history, Anne was betrothed to Edels, that's King Henry VI's son, uh, once Warwick switched loyalties um, because at first he's with the Yorks and then he's with the Lancasters. But Edward dies before they are married. Um, 
both George, the Duke of Clarence, and Richard III, their brothers, and they tried to woo her, but um, accounts on how Richard III actually won her over differ. There's no set in stone uh, way that he did this. Richard III and his brother George, they took all of her inheritance, so this was most likely not a love match. Um, Anne was crowned queen on July 6, 1483. She gave birth to of Middleham, Prince of Wales, in 1473, but he died at the age of 10. And then, so she adopted Edward Plantagenet, um, the 17th Earl of Warwick, and she died of tuberculosis on March 16th, 1485. Now, in the play, first things first, um, in the pl really, sorry, Lady Anne was only betrothed to Edward, the Prince of Wales in real life, but is considered married to him in the play. Um, the play also compresses events, of course, to, uh, help the story along, um, that actually transpired over a long period of time. Uh, for example, Richard's murderous plot against his brother, George, is cleverly twined with his cynical courtship of Lady Anne. In fact, the scene where he tries to woo her over her dead father-in-law's body, uh, that made up, didn't happen. Um, also in the play, Richard poisons Anne, and uh, it was rumored at the time that that might have happened so he can marry his niece. Uh, Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth's daughter, Elizabeth. Um, but she, um, there was no historical evidence of that actually happening. They now believe that it was just from tuberculosis. What's funny though is that that same Elizabeth he dies before he could marry her. Richard does. Eldest daughter Elizabeth gets um, married to Henry the Seventh which then starts our Tudor dynasty. And I included a works cited page on where I nation. Most of it came from the Norton. And that is my conclusion. Thank you.